Hi, Yaten. Uh, sorry, I'm doing this uh, with not very good light. I'll try and make sure that any other videos I do, I do in the middle of the day. And then we won't get lots of shadows, but unfortunately you're going to see, hello, <laughs> uh, my shadow. So for your homework, in case the uh, answers are not that helpful for you, uh, because you couldn't do it, um, I'm going to work you through them. Uh, so feel free if you got the answers right to, to not watch this video, but if you got the answers wrong, make sure that you do. Okay, so we learned in the last lesson that I saw you an equation for uh, refraction, and that was Snell's law. So we said n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2, which is going to be really important here. So a ray of light falls on a glass block and the angle of incidence is 45. So if it's falling on the glass block, it's coming from air. So this angle is 45. And the angle of refraction, so the angle uh, after it's entered into the glass, is 30. We know, and we should remember, that N is 1 in air, and that's going to help us. So that means that we have 1 sine 45, because we've got N1 sine theta 1, must be equal to N2, which is what we're trying to work out, multiplied by sine 30, which is theta 2. So N2 is the N of glass, and that's what we're trying to work out. And if I rearrange that, I can say N2 is equal to sine 45 divided by sine 30. And that on a calculator is 1.41. Okay, so that's N of glass for this particular worksheet. Obviously, in the lesson before, we uh, actually said that it was about 1.5. It depends on the glass, um, but you will be given the values that you need to calculate it in any questions. So that's the first question, so fairly straightforward. Okay, question two then uh, has a bit more to it that we need to have a little look at. So a glass block has two parallel sides, which are five centimetres apart. The angle of incidence of a ray of light falling on one of the two parallel sides is 50 degrees. So I've got one, two parallel sides that are five centimetres apart. The angle of incidence for the ray coming in is 50 degrees. It says find by drawing or calculation the perpendicular distance between the ray entering and leaving the block. So, the distance that we actually are being asked to find, if I extend that normal line down, it entered here and it left somewhere over here. So, we are trying to not work out the length 5, we already know that one, we're trying to work out this perpendicular distance here. Okay? Okay, so... I'm not going to do it by drawing because that's fairly straightforward. You literally physically draw it to scale so that this line is actually 5 centimetres and this angle is actually 50. And then if you draw it, you should just be able to measure it with a ruler. Uh, but I'm going to show you the calculation method just to help you out here. So we're going to use the same equation as in question 1. We're going to say n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2 and before it enters the glass it would have been in air because that's what we live in here's the glass we worked out here from question one that at that n is 1.41 and this n is 1 and so what we know now is that 1 for n1 sine 50 must equal 1.41 from the previous question, sine theta 2. So, sine 50 over 1.41 is equal to sine theta 2. Now, if I calculate this and then do sine to the minus 1, I will get theta 2, and theta 2 is worked out to be 33 degrees. If you've got trouble with that, you need to email me and I will talk you through that. 
Okay, now hopefully what you can see is that the triangle that gets traced from the ray in the block looks a lot like this one. And what we've just worked out is that this angle here is 33 degrees. And so I'm just going to put that into my triangle here. I know that this is a right angle. If this is my angle, then this is opposite. This is my uh, hypotenuse and this is my adjacent. Okay, now let me just grab my calculator, sorry. So, I can then look at my trig identities. I don't know if you write them like this in maths, but I always find it helpful. And we definitely have the angle that we're after and we want to know O, so we're not going to use this one. And so we can say, okay, we know the value of the adjacent and we know the angle. So we can say tan theta multiplied by A must be O. And in this case, I'm going to say tan 33 multiplied by 5 equals O. I'm just going to do that quickly. And therefore, O equals 3.24 centimetres. And so what that means is this length here is 3.24 centimetres, which is the same as this one. And therefore, that is the length of the perpendicular distance between the ray entering and leaving the block. So that's question two. Okay. Number three. Let me see if I can just push this up so that you can see. Uh, a couple of issues with question three that might trip you up. So, a diver is working underwater and a ray of light from his lamp strikes the surface of the water at an angle of 55 degrees to the horizontal. Okay, so this angle is 55, but that's not the angle of incidence. So I must be equal to 90 minus 55, giving me 35 degrees. That's important, the angle of incidence. Okay, so I also know that this time I'm starting in water because the diver's already underwater. Okay, so we've got N1 is 1.33 and then 2 we go into air is 1 okay so I can use the same equation as before and I can say uh, 1.33 sine 35 for n1 sine theta 1 must equal n2 which is 1 sine theta 2 which is r okay so I can calculate this and it works out to be 0.762 uh, I'm going to truncate that with rounding but on your calculator you can hold the value that's fine and I can work out that theta 2 is 49.7 degrees if yours is slightly different with rounding that's not a problem but again the question says at what angle to the horizontal will the ray, ray travel after it leads the water, and I've worked out that this one here is 49.7. Okay, so I have to do 90 minus 49.7, and I get 40.3 degrees is the angle it makes with the horizontal, so that's my answer there. Okay, four and five look like they're a little bit more straightforward from the looks of things. So same equation as always, n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. Uh, I'm rotating round so that you can see things from different perspectives so that it's not just vertical and horizontal um, all the time. Uh, because it, no matter what, so long as you can draw the normal line uh, between the two different media, you're fine. It will always work. So we've got going from air into glass. So we've got 1 sine 28 equals 1.5 sine theta 2. So sine theta 2 
equals sine 28 over 1.5. A bit of number crunching gives me theta 2 is equal to 18.2 degrees. Uh, and then number 5, again, pretty straightforward. So this time we're again approaching a transparent block. And this time we've got a new refractive index of 1.35, but we know we start in air where n is 1. So n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. 1 sine 33 equals 1.35 sine theta 2. So sine 33 over 1.35 equals sine theta 2. And I can work out that theta 2 is 23.8 degrees with some rounding. Uh, so hopefully by now you are happy with our Snell's Law equation.